Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we'll be exploring Commodore, a troubleshooting platform for Kubernetes. Now, Commodore is actually a long time supporter of all the work that I do for the community. So make sure you check them out. Uh, They're pretty cool people uh, and do a lot for the community, open source and Kubernetes troubleshooting, which itself is cool, right? So uh, let's try to understand and figure out what Commodore does, what it offers, how you can actually get insights from your Kubernetes clusters in Commodore. So let's get started. So as you can see on the Commodore website, it's automate Kubernetes troubleshooting. So it takes insights from your Kubernetes clusters, run automated playbooks, which does all the checks that you actually do, you know, kubectl, get logs, events, uh, describe. So basically you don't have to interact with kubectl anymore. Everything and anything you can do with Commodore platform itself. They've explained beautifully about how Commodore Brain works and how it can monitor, send you the alertings, how it can run the automated playbooks and give you suggestions on how to fix those and why those checks are actually performed. So I think those are pretty cool benefits of Commodore. And uh, you can you know get started and you can uh, sign up for Commodore since I've already logged in. So it's showing my uh, logged in dashboard. So this is how typically a Commodore dashboard looks like. So you can do a bunch of stuff with Commodore. First is services. So Commodore services are actually the applications that are deployed onto a Kubernetes cluster. So when you go to integrations, uh, you can actually see a Kubernetes cluster, which is actually being connected to this Commodore dashboard. So it has already installed uh, the Commodore agent onto the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, how to add a cluster? Let's, let's look from the scratch and then I'll show you some of the things that I've already done on this cluster. So let's uh, see Kubernetes cluster. I click on add cluster. I give it a name, live demo, and I click next. So it gives me this uh, command that I actually need to run on um, the Kubernetes cluster, which is created. So I have already created a Kubernetes cluster, which is uh, this, and we'll try to run this particular command, helm repo add, and it will automatically deploy the K8's watcher onto this particular cluster, which will be able to connect back to Commodore dashboard. And then Commodore will be able to gain the insights and tell you about your services, which are the actual applications that has been deployed onto the Kubernetes cluster. So you can see the Helm chart is uh, deployed. Now let's go back to the dashboard and you can see the clusters. So we have two clusters over here and we can filter by the clusters. So our services will list all the services which are there on the clusters. So you can see all the services which are there and we can filter them by demo cluster, which was the previous cluster that was already having Commodore. And you can also filter by the new cluster, which is just uh, being installed. And on the cluster side, you can see kubectl get nodes, uh, get pods. And you can see the in the Commodore namespace, the Kate's watcher pod has been installed. So this particular view is the services view for the live demo cluster that we just installed Commodore on. And if I click on any of the services, let's click on it. It shows a lot of information. It shows the timeline. So this particular thing is called a timeline. So it's basically depicts the series of events when it happened and what was the impact of that particular deployment on the cluster. And you can do a service describe. So this actually does a kubectl describe of that particular service that you are do, um, you know, doing and it will show you the events. Sometimes that is important. We'll see that in a minute. You can see the node status on which it is deployed. You can also see the pod logs. So if we see the pod is ready and it will be able to fetch the logs of the pod as well without even interacting to the cluster. We can copy it. We can you know, have it in a pop-up window. Let's go back to the service view. And these are the event types. So this is the deploy. So when you click on deploy, it gives you a summary. So this, this particular view, which you are seeing on the right hand side is called the summary view. So it, it says that the deployment was completed, uh, the summary of events, which is there, um, the annotations, and it also shows you the diff, which is there. And it can have integrations and links that can be added, like add a Slack integration, add a source control connection. Now let's create deployment and see what happens to the services view in Commodore. QCTL create deploy. Um, 
So, yun. Hmm. Hyphen, hyphen. Image into next. Okay. Created. CubeCTL get pods. It's fine. Let's come here. Okay, it's already been shown in the dashboard of Commodore. So it says Siam is there, it's healthy. I go and come here. It's the timeline view says, okay, the deployment is fine. It's running. Cool. Now let's do kubectl edit deploy Siam. And let's change the image to demo XYZ. And our deployment is edited. Now let's go back to our view. And we can already see that our deployment has failed. Now that's what timeline view shows. So if, if I zoom into the timeline, which I can, and other fancy features, and also it actually, you can set your time zone as well. So it, it exactly tells you at which your time this particular thing has happened. So it, it is cool. Now let's come here. So you can see the deployment was created at this time. And at this time, there was made some change due to which the deployment has failed. Now, why it has failed? Let's click here. If you go to the summary view, we can uh, already see that it's not able to pull the image. This is the reason. And events, you can see image error pull because we intentionally gave the wrong image. And here you can see the diff. So we changed. What was the change? So we changed the image from Nginx to demo XYZ. So you can see all the stuff which has happened to a particular deployment in this particular summary view. So I think that's pretty good and pretty neat that it tells you uh, in detail what, what the reason is, the events, and all those things. And also, if you uh, see and you can, or, or if you want to see the specific things, like, you know, the service describe what has happened. Uh, so that will be visible to you. You can see what is there. And if you want to see the node status, uh, which is on which this particular thing is running. And if you specifically want to see things from the pod, which is there, like it's logs, um, it's not there because the pod itself is not there. It's an image pull uh, back off. So it, it does your kubectl get pods, give you that view and describe events. So you can see all the things in a very good view. You don't even have to interact with your kubectl commands. So that's what the power comes with. Now I have changed uh, the image back to Nginx and you can see that the image is changed back to Nginx. It is green. So that's what the timeline view is so powerful. You know, if you are debugging, you will be able to see the timeline. You will be able to see how much downtime was there for your application. You'll be able to define your SLAs. Uh, you'll be able to showcase like, you know, when you are in your leadership team meeting or wherever you are, like this is the problem, why this happened. This happened for this much duration. That's how the timeline view is so powerful. And definitely it tells you what all changes were made, gives you the summary view of that. And also you can share this, so all the links which are there, they are shareable. So all the people who are in the team in the Commodore. So if you go to your teams, you can add as many members you want. And all those members will be able to see the exact same view that you are seeing from the URL that you share. I think that's very handy as well. So another thing uh, for this particular service, which, which I just didn't mention, like it tells you the status, uh, the cluster, which is there, the namespace, which it is in, the image which it is running and the replicas. Uh, here are some of the best practices. So it also tells you the best practices that you should be following while deploying your workloads. So if, you, if I click on that, it shows like the liveness uh, probe is missing and what is checked so it also gives you the information so that is where i one thing i like about commodore that it always tries to educate you what is actually happening so check if the liveness probe is not configured for for a prod liveness probe are designed to ensure that an application stays in a healthy state when the probe fails the pod will be restarted so that's a critical one and uh, you can also ignore it and you can you know um, see that this particular thing is not there uh, memory limits is not specified. Then some of them are warnings like, you know, uh, CPU request is missing. Uh, what would be good is if they can actually put the liveness probe, a demo one over here and people can just apply them. I think that that would be. Yeah, so that's something handy that comes out of the box. The best practices for your deployments, which are there. That's what the services view gives. So it gives you on in, in a summary, it gives you a summary view. It gives you a fancy timeline that 
that can be really, really helpful. It gives you the service described, node status, pod log status, the best practices which are there. Now I want to uh, highlight some of the things uh, which are the monitors. So monitors will be automatically created. So there are few monitors like a PVC monitor, cron job monitor, uh, availability monitor, node monitor, job monitor. So all these monitor will be there and um, they will be able to track the changes of the events and based on certain conditions, so like I can add a rule based on certain conditions, they'll be able to get you the notification if something goes wrong in different uh, platforms like Slack, Teams, uh, Ops Engine, PagerDuty. So all those things are baked in. Now, let's see how it actually looks like because it runs a series of playbooks when something goes wrong. Um, I already have a service which gives me a problem. Uh, that service is... That service is a memory pressure service. So it is a stress test that I have deployed onto the cluster. I have given like 10 replicas so that it burdens my node and makes it not ready. So that's a cluster which is already there. So if, you, if I have done kubectl get nodes, it shows that my node is not ready now let's go to the services view in my demo cluster in this particular cluster i have a destroy uh, deployment which is unhealthy which i know <laughs> and now let's see its timeline so its timeline will be uh, interesting because there is a node issue so you can see this particular timeline which is there now if i go to some of the issues which are there on the timeline like the availability issue it tells me that the node is not ready, which was intended that this thing should do. All my replicas are unhealthy and whatever was there on this particular node running, they were evicted, all this stuff. So it gives you live pods and logs that you can see what is there. But we already know that it's not ready, so it will be mostly errored or things like that. But another tab is called Open Monitor View. Now, this is super interesting. So if I open the Monitor View, it will do a series of check against this particular deployment, uh, like what is the availability? Um, are the pods healthy? Yes, none of the pods are healthy. And these are the reason for that, that the node is not ready. That's why the pods are not healthy. Uh, view destroy latest deployment, uh, destroy latest deployment changes. So what were the latest deployment changes that were there? So that was the time when the replicas were changed. Uh, destroy describe. So the third check is the uh, view destroy describe. So you can see what all things are there and you can also see what they checked and why they checked the latest deployment changes, what all things have been checked, why they have checked this particular stuff. So that's the playbook that which, which they already keep on checking. They keep on monitoring that. So this is how the uh, node monitor would look like, like the node is not healthy. And uh, if I click here, it gives you a more diverse view. So it, it checks six different things, six or seven, I believe like, is node, is node ready? The node is not ready. Is node schedulable? The node is unschedulable. Um, are all the user pods healthy? The pods are not healthy. Are all the system pods healthy? No, they are not healthy. So it does all these checks. Now you can see uh, node is not ready and you can see all the services which are not ready and you can see what all checks were made. So we ran kubectl describe node to see the node condition. So you can see the command that they're in, why they, they ran this. So I think that's that gives you know a good view of what is actually happening, why they have checked this particular scenario, gives you education and gives you the actual thing to check. System pods, taints, which are there, pod health, how did they check kubectl get pods, field selector, you know, node space, metadata, not equal to cube system. So you can see what all cube system pods are healthy or not. Pod eviction, they are checking. Why do we check? How do they check? So I think they are educating. Plus they are doing a lot of checks, automated checks. So this is called playbooks, which are they are running continuously. And then based on your alerting and rules configured, it will alert you as well. So I think this is the monitors view, which is really, really powerful when something goes wrong with the node, because node issues are very hard to track. Uh, when when you know when you are debugging a big thousand node cluster so you'll be able to get the view in uh, you know the triggered monitors and you'll be able to see what all happened when it all happened and in the timeline you'll be able to exactly see what changed actually trigger this particular monitor and then there are other you know monitors as well which which are available
yeah then you have some of the other things like uh, you know what all jobs have run if for any deployment uh, what all events on a whole that were there like 44 events were there which caused which particular issue so a summary view and you can also filter by service filter by events filter by uh, clusters which are there existing notifications available notification you can easily add the notification and get your alerts so these are all the integrations you can install gitlab you have uh, github integration pager duty slack ops engine datadog new relic prometheus grafana alert managers so all these integrations are fairly simple and uh, you can always add a cluster using the kubernetes integration and this gives you the node view and you can um, filter by the cluster you can filter by the status as well it also gives you the views like you can see the number of pods which are deployed onto the cluster so a basic bare minimum kubernetes dashboard you can say so you can see the pods which are there the replica sets which are there you can also see the storage so what all pvcs are there right now there's nothing uh, you can see the storage class which is there and for the configuration you can see the config maps you can see the secrets resource quotas limit ranges hpa PDB and so on and on network size you can actually see k8 services which are there so the these are the services you can see the endpoints for that particular services ingresses if any network policies endpoint slices and you can also have a view of your crds which are there on your cluster so it gives you the minimal dashboard as well, where you can see all the resources deployed so that you do not have to go back and check what all things are there on your Kubernetes cluster. And Commodore, definitely, I told you, the services and the monitors definitely gives you a much more rich view with the summaries, the timelines, what, when happened, and which triggered which particular issue, which change triggered which particular issue. That's pretty much it about uh, Commodore. I believe they, they have much stronger view of kubernetes troubleshooting where you do not once you connect the cluster to commodore you don't have to worry at all you'll get all the alertings built in you'll get all the uh, best practices built in out of the box monitors which are built in and you'll be able to track down and hunt your issues very easily using this particular platform so yeah try out commodore and let let me know i think people over there are also nice uh, so you can try reach them out and you know try out the platform let them know what what all things you like, what all things you think you, it, it should be updated. I personally feel the K8, the services, the DB itself confuses with the K8 services, which they might, uh, you know, they should consider changing, to be honest. Uh, but overall, a very, very good platform. I had a conversation with the team last week itself, and uh, they're working on some really cool improvements in the platform to give you even the richer view of uh, the problems that are there in your communities. Uh, thank you for watching uh, this particular video on Commodore. I hope you like the video. If you like, please do drop a like, subscribe to the channel and share this video so that it can reach out to maximum audience. And make sure you follow Cube Simplify and be part of the mission to reach to millions. Uh, till then, see you next time.